Hello, I'm going to show you how to run breakout rooms in Google Meet. So I'm here in a Google Meet, and you can see I already have students here who have joined. When you're ready to run a breakout room, you're going to go up here to this tab on the top right called the Activities tab. I'm going to go ahead and click on there, and then you'll see I have some options here. And the very first option there is breakout rooms. If you don't see breakout rooms as an option here, it's very likely that you don't have the host controls for this Google Meet. A quick way to check if you have host controls is if you see this blue shield down here in the bottom left. So if you don't see the blue shield down here, you won't have the ability to run breakout rooms, and that's likely because another adult joined this Google Meet before you did. OK, so when you're ready to start a breakout room, you're going to go ahead and click on the breakout rooms option. And then you'll see here the main call and all the students, including yourself, um, who are in this call. To start breakout rooms, you're going to click Set Up Breakout Rooms. And this is just setting up the rooms. When you click that button, it won't actually start the rooms for the students. And the rooms don't actually start for the students until you click this Open Rooms button down here on the bottom right. So it gives you a chance to set everything up the way you would like before the breakout rooms begin. So you'll notice some options at the top here. It'll automatically default to two rooms. Uh, you can see here, breakout room one and two. Uh, Two rooms is the fewest number of rooms you can have. So if you only wanted one breakout room, for example, uh, you could just not use the second one. If you would like to increase the number of rooms, you can do that by just typing in a number here or using the arrows to get the number of rooms you would like. Here they are, breakout rooms one, two, and three. You can rename these rooms. So maybe, right, I have a green group, a blue group, whatever it is get the idea. You can rename these however you want. You'll also notice over here on the side this X. Um, this is if you would like to delete a room. So maybe I decide I don't want this red breakout room. I can just X that and it'll go away. The other thing that Google Meet does for you is automatically try to distribute, evenly distribute the students between the number of rooms you have. Um, so if you would like to, if, if you want your groups to be randomized, um, you can always, right, so I just added a third room and you can see now it's put that other student into the third room to have equal grouping amongst the three rooms. Um, if you would like, if you want to keep it randomized, you can just stick with the groups that way. You can also shuffle. If you see a grouping that you think isn't appropriate, you can just hit shuffle and then it'll move them around. Um, and Let's see, if I hit shuffle here again, you can see now it's added that student into one of the rooms. Um, most likely you have uh, specific groupings that you would like um, for the students. So a fast way to get all the students back into the main call up here so that you can then distribute the students the way you would like is using this clear button. So I'm going to go ahead and hit clear. And now you can see all the students are listed up here in the main call. And now I can either click and drag the students into the rooms. Um, you can also type the name of a student. So if I click into this field here and I start typing the name of a student, it gives me these options and I can simply click on the one that I would like. So I'm going to move this student into this room here. And now that I have my rooms set up the way I want, um, you can get started with actually opening the rooms for students. One last thing um, that you, is an optional to use is the timer up here. So if I click on the timer, I can say, check this box and breakout rooms after a set amount of time. And maybe I say, it's gonna be short. I just want them to be in there for four minutes. What this will do is it puts a timer at the top of the screen for both you and your students. So they're able to gauge you know, how much longer they have left in the breakout rooms. It will also um, do a countdown and automatically end the breakout rooms for you um, at the end of the timer. So I'm going to hit OK there. And now I am ready to run breakout rooms. So I'm going to go ahead and say Open Rooms. When I click on Open Rooms, the students will see a notification on their screen asking them to join a breakout room. It's, it says, you've been invited to a breakout room. Click the Join button to join it. The students will have to click that Join button in order to join the breakout room. What you'll see here on the teacher's end is um, these dots 
in these different colored dots indicate different things. So um, the yellow dot on my students here indicates that I assigned them to a breakout room, but they have not yet clicked the join button to join that room. And again, that join button appears on their screen. So for example, when a student joins a room, that student then is down here in um, this blue room, and you can see it has a green dot because that is the correct room that they have been assigned to. And same thing will happen when my other students click the join button on their screen to join a room. They will then um, sh appear in that room on the teacher side with a green dot next to their name. One thing um, that you can do is edit the room. So for example, um, if I think actually the pairing here in the green room is not a good setup and I wanna move a student, um, you can use this edit rooms button to move students around while breakout rooms are actually live and running. So I'm gonna click on edit rooms and then I have the option to move, for example, this student down here to this room. If you use the edit rooms button, you will need to click save. Now those changes have been saved and what that student will see is a notification on their screen saying, you've been assigned to a different breakout room, click the join button to join. On the teacher's end, you'll notice that that student that I moved to the blue room is appearing here with a red dot. That indicates that they are in the wrong breakout room because I've reassigned them to this room and they have not joined yet. They're in the wrong breakout room and, and that red dot there is a notification to the teacher letting them know that they have not yet joined the correct room. Once that student joins the correct room, then you'll see they move down here and now have a green dot next to their name. Something else that the students have on their screen is a ask for help button. I'm gonna show you what that looks like when a, a student clicks on it. So a, this student, test two student has asked for help and you'll see that little notification pop up briefly on the bottom of your screen. The, the other place where you see this notification is over here on the right hand side. It's telling me this student, test two student has asked for help just now and that they're in the blue group. So what I could do then is go ahead and join the blue group to see to help that student. So for a teacher to join the breakout rooms, um, all they need to do is go over here next to the name of the room and click join. And what this will do is now put me into this blue room so that I can work with the students in that room. And now that I've joined this room, you'll notice uh, Google Meet is assuming I've helped that student that has asked for help, so that notification went away. I can always leave this room. If I click the leave button, it'll put me back into the main call. Or I could skip right over to another room and click this join button for the green room and it'll move me right over into the green room. You'll see now that um, I get this notification that says breakout room has ended. That is because the timer, I set the timer for four minutes, the four minute timer has ended and now it has um, finished or ended the breakout rooms automatically for me. Um, so what all the students will see when the timer is over is the option to return to the main call. And all the students see this same notification on their screen. So as a teacher, I'm also going to select return to the main call. And you can see over here on the right hand side, these students have not yet clicked to that button to return to the main call, which is why they appear in with a yellow dot next to their name. Um, and the students will need to click return to the main call. There's no way to force them to return to the main call. You'll notice here the names of these breakout rooms um, is saved right now because I'm still in the Google Meet. However, when you hang up from the Google Meet, the names of the rooms nor the assignments get saved. So you will need to reassign those groups uh, manually every time you have a Google Meet and want to use breakout rooms. The last thing that I wanna show you is just what it looks like if you would like to um, manually end the breakout rooms, not use the timer, but manually end the breakout rooms. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up breakout rooms one more time so you can see what that will look like. And all my students will join their breakout room. 
All right, so all the students are in the breakout room. If I'm not using the timer, I can choose to close the rooms at any time. And that would be here using this close rooms option. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Um, if I, it'll give me a notification saying everyone will be asked to return the, to the main call in 30 seconds. So I'm gonna say, okay, close all rooms. And then you'll notice at the top here, breakout room is ending in 30 seconds and it has a countdown for me. If I don't want to wait for those 30 seconds, I can go back over here and choose this option, close rooms now and select close all rooms now. And then my students, again, will get a notification on their screen saying breakout rooms has ended, return to the main call, and they will need to click the return to the main call option on their screen. The last thing I wanna point out for breakout rooms is that the raise hand option um, for that appears down here for students, you will only be able to see that if you are in the room with students. So um, I would really direct students to use that ask for help button at the top of their screen um, if you're moving between rooms. If you're gonna stay in a room with students for a while, then you, will, um, you can instruct them to use this raise hand option. Finally, a few other things to note is um, when you post something in the chat, it only posts in the chat for the current room that you're in. There's no way to post something in the chat um, and have it appear in all the breakout rooms. There's also no way to um, project your voice into all the breakout rooms. You would have to manually join each individual room um, to deliver that message to the students. All right, enjoy.